Good afternoon, everybody. The Department of State's 230th anniversary is this Saturday, and the State Department will reach an exciting milestone. A, two, a full 230 years ago, on July 27, 1789, our founding fathers approved legislation establishing the Department of State as our nation's first executive branch department. Today, our great team continues to work tirelessly to lead American diplomacy and to protect American citizens worldwide. Here at the Harry S. Truman Building, we will celebrate this anniversary on Monday, July 29th. In addition to remarks by Secretary Pompeo in the Dean Atchison Auditorium, we are honored to be joined by former Secretary of State Dr. Henry Kissinger, who will share his remembrances and conversation with his official biographer, Dr. Niall Ferguson. As we celebrate 230 years since our founding, we look forward to continuing our proud legacy of service to this great nation in the centuries ahead. I am also pleased to announce that the Secretary of State will travel to Bangkok, Thailand, Australia, and the Federated States of Micronesia, July 30th through August 6th, to deepen our long-standing alliances and vibrant bilateral relations with these countries, and to reaffirm our commitment to ASEAN which is central to our vision for the Indo-Pacific region. On August 1st, Secretary Pompeo will arrive in Bangkok, where he will co-chair the U.S. Association of Southeast Asian Nations ASEAN Ministerial at the Lower Mekong Initiative Ministerial. The next day, August 2nd, Secretary Pompeo will deliver remarks at the Siam Society on America's economic engagement in the Asia-Pacific region. The Secretary will then participate in the East Asia Summit Ministerial, the ASEAN Regional Foreign Ministerial, and will hold a bilateral meeting with Thai Foreign Minister to discuss ways to further strengthen the U.S.-Thai alliance. On August 3rd, the Secretary will travel from Thailand to Australia. On August 4th, Secretary Pompeo, along with Secretary of Defense Esper, will lead the U.S. delegation to the Australia-United States Ministerial Consultations, Osman. As a part of his Osman engagement, the Secretary will participate in dialogues aimed at strengthening the alliance, working shoulder to shoulder with Australia to meet global and transnational challenges, and safeguarding sovereignty in the Pacific Island countries and in Southeast Asia. The Secretary will also deliver remarks on the U.S.-Australia relationship at the State Library of New South Wales. Finally, the Secretary will meet with Prime Minister Morrison to discuss continued collaboration on advancing our shared set of values, principles, and overlapping interest. On August 5th, Secretary Pompeo will meet with the Consulate General Staff and family members and then depart for the Federated States of Micronesia to reaffirm our special partnership with this Pacific Island country under our Compact of Free Association. The Secretary's visit to the Federated States of Micronesia marks the first ever visit by a Secretary of State to Micronesia. On this visit, Secretary Pompeo will meet with, with leaders of the Federated States of Micronesia, the Republic of the Marshall Islands, and the Republic of Palau. The Secretary will also meet with staff and family members of the U.S. Embassy. Secretary Pompeo will finish his visit by paying his respect and laying, uh, and laying a wreath to honor the service of the citizens of the Federated States of Micronesia and, and, and the U.S. Armed Forces. New today, the United States congratulates Boris Johnson on his appointment as the new U.K. Prime Minister. As the President said on his visit to the U.K. in June, the U.S.-U.K. special relationship is grounded in common history, values, customs, culture, language, and laws. This foundation gives strength to our enduring partnership as we face together emerging challenges in the world. We look forward to continuing this critical work with Prime Minister Johnson's government, and we remain committed to our shared <coughs> global agenda and special relationship. On that note, the Secretary uh, actually just got off the phone with newly appointed UK uh, Foreign Secretary Dominique Robb. I'm just going to read this uh, out to all of you, and of course you'll have a, a copy in your email as well. Secretary Michael R. Pompeo spoke with UK Foreign Secretary Dominic Robb today to discuss key global priorities, including countering Iran's attempts to expand its nuclear program and strengthening the NATO alliance. Just a few more things for you. Today, we offer our deepest condolences to the people of Tunisia on the passing of President Baji Kayed Isibsi. President Isibsi was the first democratically elected president of Tunisia after its 2011 revolution. Throughout his long career, he distinguished himself as an advocate for the freedom and equality of the Tunisian people. 
As president, he was a close friend and valued partner of the United States. He will be remembered for his efforts to strengthen Tunisian democracy and for promoting peace and stability throughout the region. And finally, in response to the alarming trajectory of the Ebola outbreak in the Democratic Republic of Congo, USAID announced yesterday that it is providing more than $38 million in assistance, including $15 million in new funding for the World Health Organization. This brings the total USAID funding for this response to more than $136 million since the beginning of the outbreak in August 2018. We appreciate the work of all outbreak responders led by the DRC government with support from the UN, WHO, and NGOs to contain this outbreak. USAID's Disaster Assistance Response Team, comprising of disaster and health experts from USAID and, C and the CDC, have been on the ground since September 2018, working with the U.S. Embassy on our response efforts. Ending this Ebola outbreak remains a priority for the U.S. government. The United States is currently the largest single country donor to the Ebola response, and we call on other international donors to provide robust financial and technical support to the response, including through the DRC and WHO Strategic Response Plan. The end. Matt. <laughs> I could, I could I, find I, one I more for you, I'm say, sure. I've got to say, the teleprompter experiment is interesting, but I've got, now I've got a headache from trying to read upside down and you know, backwards. You know, I'm going to say it all. You could just wait. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you a very minor logistical question before moving to North Korea? Mm -hmm. And the, this is about the media note that you guys put out a little while ago about the call that um, Pompeo had, Secretary Pompeo had with President Ghani after Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. uh, just two things about it. Well, one, it says it's a joint statement. Who, uh, this is a joint yeah, U.S. Yeah, this is the call from yesterday. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Joint U.S. Afghan yes, statement. Yes, sir. Okay, and the other thing in it, it says that President Pompeo informed President Ghani, Secretary Pompeo, sorry, Gordian? getting ahead, informed President Ghani that he had dispatched Joint Chiefs Ch uh, Dunford and and it, does does that mean that Secretary Pompeo called up General Dunford and said you go, or does he re does the he in that sentence refer to President Trump? I'm pretty sure it does refer, uh, refer to President Trump. The okay. secretary has conversations with his counterparts gotcha. on a daily right. basis, so yeah. we can uh, parse to, that out for you if that if you no, need it. No, no, I'm just curious because there was some question about that. Anyway, sure. um, on North Korea, mm -hmm. what do you guys make of these latest missile or projectile launches? Will they have any impact on your efforts to get things started mm -hmm. again? Um, and is what what's the North Korea component of the secretary's travel that you announced? Uh, there's not, no not not that there's he's going there, but yeah, there's no there's no component to announce uh, on the trip as it relates to North uh, Korea. Uh, the NSC, uh, the White House issued a statement last night that you all should have a copy of. If not, our team will be happy to get it to you. And I, I don't think we're really going to go beyond that statement. We're of course aware of the reports, but I think what the the president uh, has has said and what the president has stressed and the secretary as well. Um, is that this is is that we want to have diplomatic engagement with the North Koreans, um, and we you know continue to urge the North Koreans to uh, resolve uh, all of the things that the president and that Chairman Kim have talked about uh, through diplomacy. Uh, we urge no more provocations, and to uh, that all parties should abide by our obligations under UN Security Council resolutions. But does that mean that you regard these launches as provocations, or that you're re are you reserving judgment on what what they are? I mean, listen, what we're hoping is that after the historic visit that the president uh, had at the DMZ with with uh, Kim Jong-un and many members of both teams, including the secretary and Steve Began, is that we can continue to move forward on the commitments made in Vietnam. And this administration is committed to diplomatic engagement uh, with the North Koreans. And we, we continue to press and hope for these um, working level negotiations to move forward. I'll, I'll drop it after this, but I just want to know, you urge them not to so we urge no more provocations, mm -hmm. what you said, but do you consider the launches like this to be provocations or not? What's m what would be most productive is for Chairman Kim and his staff and for President Trump and all of his staff uh, to continue upon the path that was laid out for us uh, both in Vietnam and at the DMZ. And that is a diplomatic resolution uh, in the end of uh, North Korea's nuclear weapons. I mean, that's what we have uh, stated as, as our goal this entire time. And clearly, as we often state every time we talk about it, sanctions will remain in effect until we uh, believe, all parties believe that we have reached that goal. Yeah. Um, you were hopeful after the visit to the MZ uh, to resume this uh, talking level uh, mm -hmm. negotiations by mid-July mid or July. 
Do you still plan them to start in the coming weeks? And I will follow up. Mm -hmm. Is there anything, uh, any meeting on North Korea planned during the trip uh, in, uh, in Asia? So we don't have any announcements about meetings with North Koreans, um, nor do we, nor do I ever anticipate to read out uh, individual talks, meetings, communications. When there is a status update, we will be more than happy to give it to you. But I think that the the statement from the NSC speaks for itself, and I think we've been pretty consistent on, on how but we feel. Are still so. hopeful that the of course yeah. working level uh, talks will resume soon? Yeah, d diplomacy doesn't happen overnight. I wish it did. Although I might be out of a job if it did, so maybe not. Hi, Leslie. Um, hello. Um, what contacts has the Secretary made to, what calls has he made today regarding this? Has he spoken to counterparts in China, in, China, in Seoul? Um, and what do you make of the North Korean Foreign Minister cancelling uh, his trip to Bangkok, which would have been the opportunity that Mr. Pompeo would have had to talk to him? Yeah, I, I saw that media press report, and we don't. Uh, I don't comment or speculate on on as far as as far as I read, an unnamed source saying that. So uh, that's not something that we would comment on. Um, and in terms of the secretary's uh, schedule, of whom he's spoken with today, uh, I have the readout for you from uh, the U new UK foreign minister, of course, and I don't have anything else beyond that for and, today. And that's included talks on North Korea. They were no, 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 I'm just talking about his public calls, oh, okay. calls with so, foreign counterparts so, as far as, so no calls on... I'm not saying no calls, I'm just saying that I don't have any. You don't have anything. Out. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Yeah, go ahead. Hi. North Korea. And mm -hmm. recently, uh, Secretary Pompeo uh, interviewed with the radio stations. He said that uh, he will give uh, North Korea security guarantees mm -hmm. if North Korea denuclearizations. What is the U.S. specific security guarantees for the North Korea? Well, I don't want to go beyond what the secretary said there, but it, but again, if you look at this from a thirty thousand foot level, and what we continue to stress, uh, that is our hope and our goal. Our goal in these negotiations uh, is a denuclearized uh, North Korea, of course. Um, but also something that the secretary has said often, and the president has said as well, is that we do want uh, Chairman Kim and the people of North Korea to see a brighter future for them. It could be a future without sanctions. It could be a future of economic cooperation where they could be brought into the fold into the international community and that is the that is the bright future that we're aiming for here um, but not going to get into any more so we can keep talking about North Korea guys but I'm not going to have anything else so can I have a quick follow-up um, so um, has the working level dialogue been affected at all by North Korea's behavior? I think I just asked and answered next yeah uh, me Right, we'll go second row, then third. How about that? Okay. Could you explain the status of the maritime security initiative that you announced earlier this month? Mm -hmm. Have other countries joined it, and how's it going to work with the European force? So um, the DOD just released a statement on a meeting that they had today, uh, and so I would refer you to their statement again. You could get it from them, or our team would be more than happy uh, to, pro to provide uh, updates on this. Um, you know, there is not a specific update. Uh, this is something that Brian Hook and the Secretary are working quite closely with our partners um, and allies around the world. I mean, the goal here uh, is, of course, for uh, security in the Straits of Hormuz. Uh, we're focused on uh, navigational rights, uh, freedom of the seas uh, in the Straits. Um, and this is a security initiative that we think, no matter what your uh, policy position is with the U.S., we think that our allies and friends can welcome this initiative as something that's region-wide. Mm -hmm. I promised you Follow next. Us. Yes. Follow-up? Uh, no, I promised her next. Thank Leslie Kerry, we have an independent journalist. Yep. Uh, Morgan, there is two things, so many things, actually. Prime Minister Imran Khan was in uh, Washington. Afghan people Did had you a, say Prime Minister Khan? Is that what you said? Khan. Imran yeah, yeah. Khan. Okay, Afghan sure. people had a very high expectation that they mm -hmm. will solve the problem, and President Trump will uh, discuss very seriously Afghanistan uh, mm -hmm. issue. And instead of they get happy, they are unhappy. The last uh, statement of uh, Donald Trump Who was is Who's a lot of Who are Afghan you people. Afghan people, oh, okay. they, they are not satisfied. Mm -hmm. And also the last uh, statement of President Trump make P Afghan people unhappy. They are very disappointed mm -hmm. for end of, uh, ending of uh, war in Afghanistan. And uh, Dr. Ambassador Khalilzad also went to Afghanistan to continue peace process. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you have any comment? Because Afghan people, they are very disappointed and very unhappy for the latest uh, statement for Donald Trump. I would Trump. remind the Afghan people that the 
countless number of thousands, of tens of thousands of lives, uh, that uh, American lives and lives of our NATO allies and our European allies uh, that have been lost uh, fighting uh, in Afghanistan for the people of Afghanistan to have a right to choose their own future. Uh, not just the number of lives lost, but the billions of dollars that have spent there. You could probably look at most of the people in this room that serve here at the State Department, and we have either served ourselves or we've had family members that have served. I have someone on my staff whose husband is serving there right now. So I think that the people of Afghanistan should know that for almost 20 years, uh, Americans have lost their lives and have spent their hard-earned taxpayer money to see the people of Afghanistan have a choice for their own future. And that commitment has not been a small commitment. That has been a vast and sweeping commitment by the American people. I promised you next. Who is your name? If you guys, don't do that. Go ahead. Um, following up on Lori's uh, question regarding the uh, Maritime Security Initiative, sure. the Islamic Republic of Iran has finally been able to shake the Europeans <clears throat> with um, seizing the British tanker in the mm -hmm. Persian Gulf, and now they're thinking of their own maybe um, initiative or at You're least... You're talking about the Brits? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, they're trying to maybe uh, create an alliance for escorting mm -hmm. ships or providing their security anyways. Uh, and it seems like they want to do it independent of the United States. Does the administration think that this is a good idea to have two separate uh, lines of, you know, initiatives and, uh, you know, attempts sure. uh, to... And remind that. me what publication you're with, I'm sorry. Voice of America, Persian. Oh, Science. you're with Voice of America, Persian. That's right. Sorry. Apologize. I'm still trying to remember everyone's names. Uh, so, no, we, we welcome uh, any effort by the Europeans, by our allies, by our partners. Uh, we started this press conference off by talking about, by congratulating uh, Prime Minister, the new Prime Minister, um, and as I just said, just literally minutes ago, uh, Secretary Pompeo had a conversation with the new foreign minister um, in, in the UK and of course I've been a part of many conversations and many meetings that the secretary has had with his British counterparts so um, we think that we have a strong enduring relationship we work incredibly closely uh, with the with the British and with our Europeans on a number of issues we don't see daylight between our two countries but I think it's important to note that uh, you know the Prime Minister the new Prime Minister is forming his government just named his foreign minister and we want to give them the opportunity to articulate uh, how they feel about any British policies, not just this one. So I think we'll give them the space to comment further. It's the British, the French, the Danes, mm -hmm. um, they're all thinking Yeah, we're about very supportive. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Turkey. Sure. Can so, you say your name and who you're with? Uh, Namo Abdullah with Rudal from Kurdistan. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. So. Uh, Which, your question's on Turkey? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, U.S. Uh, after uh, uh, Special Envoy James Jeffries meetings in, yes. in Ankara. Mm -hmm. The U.S. Embassy uh, put out a statement yes. describing it as forthright, positive, and productive. But the Turkish Foreign Minister, following that statement, mm -hmm. he said that Turkey was rejecting the U.S. offer on Syria. I, we don't really know what was the offer. If you can give us more detail. Yeah, I, I don't think that I'm going to go beyond the readout that the embassy put out. Uh, I would say that clearly this is not an e easy issue. This is one of the more challenging issues that uh, Ambassador Jeffrey has in, in his portfolio. Um, and the president's goals in Syria, the secretary's goal, goals um, in Syria, uh, are, of course, to prevent a security vacuum that destabilizes the area. And we want to do that by addressing Turkey's legitimate security concerns um, and by also protecting our partners in the fight against ISIS. So we um, certainly appreciate the efforts of uh, the ambassador, and we hope uh, that we can, we believe these talks will continue. That was, they did not end. Yay, yeah, Christina. Um, do we have any updates on the uh, S-400 sanctions, and can you tell us what is taking so long? Is there a chance that there will be no sanctions? Will there be sanctions? Mm -hmm. What's well, going on yeah. with all the cats? I would, I would point you to, first of all, to the President's statements uh, about the F-35, and, I, and I, that is certainly not insignificant. Um, that was, you know, something that the, that the President took, and the Department of Defense took very, very seriously. I mean, that's a very, very heavy action. Uh, as it relates to, to CATSA, there is no uh, timetable in the legislation. We continue, uh, of course, to, to talk to the Turks about this and to uh, 
uh, reiterate uh, our concern. Um, and so I don't think that we don't have anything new to announce today, uh, but I would certainly, you know, point you to the President's comments last week about where we are in terms of the F-35 program. But nothing, nothing new to announce today on sanctions. Could you give us any guidance, though, as to why it's taking so long? Because, I mean, we've known this was coming for a very long time. Mm -hmm. The F-35 announcement was ready to go as soon as, you know, the delivery, well, it was delayed a little bit, but, you know, fairly recent, you know, fairly mm -hmm. quickly after the announcement. I would imagine that your staff or the staff here was prepared for this. So why didn't they have this ready to go when when they took delivery of the S-400? I think that, again, there's no timetable on the president making a decision uh, with the consultation of the secretary. And I want to give the president and the secretary this space to do that. I think it's important to remember that Turkey is, of course, uh, a NATO ally. And the actions that we've taken thus far are significant. And uh, you know, one of the things that we always do here at the State Department is we always try to preserve diplomacy. We always try to preserve uh, relationships. Um, Turkey has uh, has worked with us in incredibly hard on the fight against ISIS uh, in Syria, um, and and they have uh, you know many of their own accomplishments to point to there. Um, so. Sanctioning a NATO ally is a very, very serious action, and uh, when the President and the Secretary are ready to make a determination under CATSA, I will be more than happy to tell you all of that. So, a follow-up? Yes. Mm -hmm. On Turkey, today, Turkish Defense Minister Hulusi Akar uh, met with Turkish generals, and he stated, we expect U.S. to review our proposals and give answers we cannot tolerate a delay, and we will take the initiative if necessary. He was talking who about the uh, Turkish Defense Minister, who was okay. He was talking about the possible intervention in northeastern Syria. Mm -hmm. Turkish forces are massing there. What is your view about the uh, possible Turkish intervention in northeastern Syria? Yeah, this is, you know, again, this is an issue that Ambassador Jeffrey is working very, very closely on, uh, of course, in the discussions with the safe zone in Turkey that we that we just talked about. So I don't think I'm going to go, you know, beyond that readout. As I said, this is an incredibly sensitive situation. Uh, we have uh, American troops present as well, and we're going to be continue. We're going to continue to work closely with um, Turkey on this issue. Yeah. What is, what is the U.S. reaction to the admission by the Pakistani Prime Minister? Imran Khan during his visit mm -hmm. and at an event in the U.S. Institute of Peace, that Pakistan still has around 30,000 to 40,000 militants who are who fought and are trained in Afghanistan, Kashmir. So how do you see the U.S.-Pakistan relations and Indo-Pak relationship progressing with this mm -hmm. kind of an admission? Sure. So, I mean, this was an initial meeting. This m meeting, uh, of course, gave the chance for the president and the secretary um, uh, to, to meet with uh, Prime Minister Khan to build a, a personal connection and, and rapport. And now we think it's time to make progress uh, on the success of this first meeting. You know, I would note one of the things that the prime minister said is that he, he vowed to urge the Taliban to negotiate with the Afghan government. Um, we are committed to peace in Afghanistan. We think that was an important step. And there was a number of issues that were discussed, uh, not only with, in the President's meeting, but with the Secretary's meeting as well. And now is the time to build upon that me meeting and to build upon those commitments. Said? Uh, quickly, this week uh, Israel demolished uh, about 100 mm -hmm. uh, housing units, uh, Palestinian housing units, mm -hmm. displacing about 1,000 people, but you did not issue any statements. I mean, your ally did. This is, of course, contrary to international law, although... Are you was, referring to Wadi al Hamas? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I, I wonder if you would comment on that, on the, you know, it's in East Jerusalem, so bad. Sure. Yeah, you didn't issue any statement. What is your position on the demolition? Uh, so we're aware of them, obviously, as you and I just spoke about. Well, we understand that uh, there has been also a very legal, legal length, length, excuse me, lengthy legal process here. But we're going to refer you to the government of Israel for more information because this is theirs. Um, I, I would just say, you know, we talk a lot about you and I do, Saeed, about some of these individual issues. But you know, what we think is is important. The president has stated, um, you know, that. He thinks that it's important for these two parties to get to the table, to work, to talk, to negotiate. And, and again, as we talked about North Korea earlier, it's easy to get into uh, the you know individual discussions on a daily basis. But again, if we pull back and we look at this from the 30,000-foot level, we would urge um, both sides to come together to talk and to negotiate. And that's why we have so many people who are committed to this uh, in our government. 
I understand, but this is uh, on land in Area A, which you helped negotiate. I mean, this was, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, an agreement that was sponsored by the U.S. and negotiated by the U.S. Mm -hmm. So you have no position on the demolition of home and displacement of Palestinians in their own land. I mean, they're on their side mm -hmm. of the wall that was, to begin with, was mm -hmm. taken from that land. You don't I think you would be a good negotiator for them, Saeed. <laughs> right. Listen, we're aware of them, Saeed, and, and as we've said, we've noted that there also has been a very, uh, very lengthy legal process uh, that you and I can't get into here from the podium, um, but we would refer you to the government of Israel for anything one further. Last one on Mr. Mm -hmm. Greenblatt gave a, a, a speech at the UN, Mr. Greenblatt, mm -hmm. on Tuesday, yes. in which he dismissed international resolutions and laws when it comes to resolving the Palestinian Israeli issue. And my question to you, are you still committed to the resolution that you are party to, or is that gone to like 242-336-487? I could name I don't think many, many resolutions. I need to go to back and look at his comments. Sponsored. I don't know that I agree with how you're characterizing his comments, well, no, so let me let me look at them and get back okay. to you. Yes, but it is, but go ahead. I appreciate ahead. that. Yeah. Let me just go back to Afghanistan and Pakistan for a minute. Sure. Um, so the Pakistani prime minister said that there would be good news on U.S. hostages mm. in the next 48 hours. That was Monday night, so it's already past 48 hours. Do you have any update on that? Well, you know, this administration um, has a very strong record, actually, on getting American hostages uh, returned. Um, we take human lives incredibly seriously, um, and we will use every means available and at our disposal to secure uh, and, the, and, and to see the secure and safe return of American citizens who are held hostage abroad. Um, the Prime Minister did say that. Uh, we are, of course, working closely with the Pakistanis um, on recovering them. We think his statements were helpful, and we're, of course, hopeful that there will be some some action preceding those statements. So we didn't fail to deliver on a promise. It's just still in works. Yes, that's okay. fair. That's and then um, on mm -hmm. Afghanistan, mm -hmm. uh, the readout between um, Ghani and Secretary Pompeo mm -hmm. said that now was the time to accelerate efforts to reach a negotiated end mm -hmm. to the war in Afghanistan. Why now? I mean, if there is indeed a condition-based strategy mm -hmm. for the U.S., how are the conditions on the ground? Um, in a place where now should be the time for peace to be negotiated at a faster rate. Yeah, I think I understand what you're saying. That that's a fair question. And I think that we will we will always continue to assess the situation on the ground. And the Secretary uh, has always been committed to that, certainly in his uh, public testimony when he's talked to Congress about this. But as I opened up, I think in one of the first or, or first or second questions that I answered, you know, we talked about the number of American lives and NATO lives, uh, the billions of dollars that American taxpayers have spent. And so I don't think that there is any doubt of the American American commitment for almost two decades uh, to Afghanistan, you know, one in which, as I said, many of these people in the room, myself included, have sent our loved ones off to Afghanistan uh, because of Americans' commitment, uh, the American government commitment to see the Afghan people be able to choose their, choose their own future, to choose their leaders. Um, and I think that's something, as an American and as a Department of State employee, that I'm incredibly proud of. And do you have okay. any comment on Go the back-to-back -back explosions in Kabul just this week, one of which was claimed by the Taliban. But any comment? No. I, I think that we. I need to double check. I think that we might have put some uh, put a statement out on that from our uh, SCA bureau. So um, I'll get that statement for you. I, I don't. I want to look at that and see exactly what it said. Go. I have a few questions on Afghanistan and visit of the Prime Minister Imran Khan. Okay, I, guys. I think I've answered it a lot. So I, I don't know that addition. I have much more to say beyond what okay. I've already said. I'll try. If so you if you have... can be creative and ask me something I haven't been asked, kudos <laughs> to you. Yeah. If not. So my first question is: There are reports that U.S. is looking for a deadline of September one to reach an agreement with the Taliban. Is that true? Uh, we're not putting, you know, we're going through those negotiations. Ambassador Khalil Azad um, uh, travels quite a bit. As you know, we've often talked about his travels here from the podium. Um, and so uh, I don't think that you can, I don't think that we're putting a specific date in terms of peace, but obviously that's something that the president has said since his campaign days. It's something that he's committed to. And uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan uh, comments on terrorists. He said that there are 30 to 40 terrorist organizations. Yes, yeah, somebody still, already said that. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, did you ask him to uh, act against, strongly against those terrorist groups? Uh, are you satisfied that he will take 
steps yeah, this time. I'm not going to go beyond uh, the readout that we've given, that the White House gave at the President's meeting, and of course the President spoke to it, um, and, and the meeting, of course, that we, I think all of you should have our readout from the, from the Secretary's meeting. But again, let me just say holistically that it, when it comes to fighting terrorism, uh, you know, you have a Secretary of State who's been committed to this his entire career, and that's something that he is always going to raise uh, with allies and friends and, and whomever comes to the table. I mean, you know, whether it was whether it was his time in the Army or his time as director of the CIA, uh, I don't know that I've ever met anyone more committed um, to, to, to fighting terrorism and to fighting injustice. Um, and, that's, and that's, again, something holistically that he's always fought for in his and, career. And finally, has the Kashmir issue, Kashmir policy of U.S. changed? Has there been any change in the U.S. policy on Kashmir? Oh, are you referring to the President's statement? Yes. Yeah, I don't have anything to say beyond the President's statement. Hi, Hi How are you? Good, thank you. Just to follow up Syed's question, I have Mr. Greenblatt's comments here. Mm -hmm. uh, and he said, um, international law, this conflict is not going to be resolved by reference to international law when such law is inconclusive. We will not get to the bottom of whose interpretation of international law is correct on this conflict. It's a tricky subject. This conflict will not be resolved by constantly referencing the hundreds of UN resolutions on the issue. So I just wondered if you could, again, that question, does that mean that the U.S. still sticks by the commitments it made to under these UN re resolutions previously? Or is Mr. Greenblatt saying we can't really reference this body of work that we've agreed to in the past because it's actually inconclusive and won't help to solve the conflict? Yeah, I, I don't want to get ahead of the secretary on this, so let me just take a further look at that I and get really back to you. I appreciate an answer at some point. Sure, we'll Thank get you. it to you today. No problem. Hi, Cindy. Hi. Um, as you know, President Trump vetoed uh, three congressional legislation on three veto three um, measures. On the arms sales? Exactly. Yeah, that would have okay. blocked certain arms sales of Saudi Arabia and UAE. Mm -hmm. uh, this caused some members of Congress to say that the administration is not treating them as a co-equal branch. Is the secretary concerned about that perception? Well, the Congress voted. They sent legislation to the president. He vetoed it. Ain't democracy grand. <laughs> Next. Sure. Um, just, uh, on the uh, Saudi weapons, what, can you go over what's being done to ensure that those weapons won't be used on civilians in Yemen? Um, we would have to get into a specific discussion about the type of weapon. I mean, we'd have to get into a weapons discussion that probably goes beyond the State Department podium. Um, we can get a much more lengthy and detailed discussion, but I don't think we can, you know, we would, we would have to go through every weapon that's in the thing in order to accurately answer that. Oh, hold on, can I? I, 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 okay, I know, so it just you. happened. The I'm trying to get everyone a chance, no, no, so you. I understand. If it something just happens, happened, I yeah. probably don't know because I'm standing well, uh, right here. The, well, it seems that the, the president of the Palestinian Authority just announced that he's suspending all agreements with Israel. I wonder if you would have. He, annou take, he, he just announced this right now? Just now. That, I, mean, you know, so I wonder you, if you would take that. And, I, and I, yeah. I, yeah. If that happened while I was standing here, I'm not going to have a comment. But we will get you one by the end of the day. Ben? Thank you, Morgan. And forgive me if I missed it, but on the Secretary's travel to Bangkok, you only mentioned one bilateral meeting with Thailand. Mm -hmm. Will the Secretary have any time to meet with Seoul or Tokyo, maybe on a pull aside, to talk about North Korea? And will Steve yeah. Began, does he have any plans to attend any um, ASEAN meetings? Uh, so I'm not going to announce the individuals on the, on the trip. I don't think that we do that here from, um, from the podium. Uh, in terms of his schedule in Thailand, I only said one meeting. Um, I need to I need to double check to see if there's any. We'll have for all the reporters coming on the trip. We'll have they'll have the full you know public schedule and whatever press avails that we have, and they'll certainly have the opportunity um, to ask questions. So that that won't be a problem. We'll we'll make sure uh, that that the public portions of the schedule are available to you. So do you know if Mr. Began's attending the ASEAN meeting? We're not going to talk about individuals who are who will be on the trip right now. But thank you. And the pink. Um, with Al Arabiya. I have a question about Qatar. Al Arabiya? Yes. Okay. I have a question about Qatar. There was an article in the New York Times uh, this week that referenced a audio recording between a Qatari ambassador to Somalia and a Somali businessman talking about a terror attack and, and kind of referencing perhaps a, a Qatari role in the uh, terrorist attack. Oh, are I think you, I know the article that you're talking about. Is, yeah. is, there, is the U.S. either looking into this or concerned about it or has a statement about this? Um, I remember that I, I remember reading the article um, that you talked about. I mean, I, I don't think we would normally have official comments on, uh, you know, articles like those that 
have accusations, but um, I'll be happy to check into it and look into it with the team. I, I did read that article, but um, to my knowledge, uh, the secretary nor NEA, uh, which is a part of that bureau, has made any sort of public comment on, on those allegations. Okay, Nike, last one. Um, recently, a Russian military fighter planes invaded the Korean air defense identification zones. Well, what is yeah, your comment? I mean, the, the Japanese might have issue with you saying that, but yes. Yes, and uh, but what's you your have, question uh, about it? Yeah, you have a uh, what is your official uh, comment for this? Uh, yeah, I mean we, we, we're aware of those reports. I think um, the uh, the White House has has put out comments on that as well. Uh, you know, as, as soon as it happened, um, and you know we obviously consider those sorts of. Uh, the, 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 and actually, now that I think about it, Secretary Esper spoke about it late yesterday. So I'd also point you back to his comments, uh, his comments as well. Um, we think that those sorts of actions are certainly provocative. It's not something uh, that we're supportive of, um, and we would hope that the Russians would not continue to do that. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you.